county in Texas called Tarrant County. It's in Fort Worth, Texas. And they identified a group called <coughs> Health Connection in Tarrant County. Um, that group, over the last 13 years, have done a tremendous amount of work to bring people together, bring providers together, both public and, and the private um, health systems, um, universities, um, consumers, and families to, to really form a better system of care. And so when we were looking at how we could do that in our region, <laughs> we invited them to come speak at the 2011 Mental Health Summit. Um, they touched on a few different things. One of the things that we liked the most was called the No Wrong Door Approach. This approach was a community approach to looking at mental health and to um, creating a system of care where people and consumers weren't going to fall through the gaps that we have in our services and that we were going to more look at what the community had to offer a consumer instead of just what our individual agencies had to offer. And there was two really unique things about their no one door approach. One, they had electronic infrastructure that was for sending and receiving referrals that literally acted as the connector for all of the providers in that community. School systems had it, law enforcement had it in their cars, um, and then obviously providers had it. And so it really provided more of the direct communication between the providers. Um, and then they were training providers on what the no one door community approach is, that there's a philosophy that when somebody walks in your door, that you were going to ask a few more questions to figure out what that whole person needed, and that we were no longer going to screen them based on what our agency can offer, but we were going to screen them based on what our community partners would offer them. And so when they identified Texas, they were also working on the 2011 Mental Health Summit in this region. That summit was attended by about 150 community stakeholders and leaders, and they really got to identify what they wanted to work on in our um, one of the, there's five different initiatives that came out of that summit. One was to create an agency, a nonprofit, to really truly become the connecting agency. Um, that agency has become the Mental Health Connection. And our role really is to connect everybody, to herd the cats of all of our providers and make sure that we are um, facilitating the communication and coordination of all of the mental health efforts that are going on in the community. Um, Another initiative that came out of that was to look at access, to look at creating a no wrong door approach in our community. Currently, um, through the efforts of coordinating with the things on the Health Share Shop and our um, no wrong door committee, we are trying to regionalize a no wrong door approach in our community. So, we are planning a May training to train some frontline staff on what the community approach looks like, and we're also looking at getting local funding through grants to implement a pilot to bring the electronic referral system. Um, it's for the region, so we really are working in the Fox Valley and in Oshkosh and trying to even possibly bring it up to Green Bay um, as we look to truly regionalize um, our system of care. Um, another initiative that came out of that 2011 summit was supporting primary care. Primary care physicians were saying, we don't feel comfortable with mental health. We don't understand it. We don't get a lot of training in med school about what mental health is or the pharmacology behind it, and we need help. We're dealing with one in four people that come into our practice every day and we don't feel like we are confident and comfortable on the issues of mental health. And so what happened is that a group of doctors came together and said there has to be a curriculum to try to better integrate mental health into primary care. Um, they developed a pilot program uh, that started back in September to train on 18 different topics for a nine-month training program free and offering CMEs. Um, we were thinking 10, 15 primary care physicians would attend here, 72 doctors right now that are currently being trained on mental health and how to diagnose it and on the pharmacology behind it. Um, that's with no advertising. That was purely our pilot program to see if people were going to be interested in it. Um, that group has went on to um, get funding again to do it next year. So um, we'll probably advertise it next year <laughs> to have more people come. But that tells you that people want the information about mental health. We're all dealing with mental health in our lives, and so we need to feel confident in how, in how we're going to provide services to people dealing with mental health. Um, another initiative that came out of that 2011 summit was supporting school-based mental health. Um, when During 2011, PATH from the United Way of uh, Fox Cities had already been um, putting school-based mental health therapists in um, 10 out of 11 school districts in the area. Um, but the need was greater than what they could do, and so the, there was an idea that we were going to support any expansion of school-based mental health. Also around that time frame, um, Kakana School District was piloting the Teen Screen Program. Um, 
because of the cluster of suicides that happened in that area. And so that has now become a more of a regional program that we're working on to roll out Teen Screen to offer it to all kids in the area of high school. Um, it's a universal um, screening tool to look at um, substance abuse and anxiety and depression and, and suicide ideations. And uh, it's a tool that can be used to screen to see if somebody's um, needing to be connected to resources. It's not saying that they have any diagnosis. It's simply saying, are we identifying something that we can connect to resources in our community? So those were the two things that existed under the school-based mental health when the um, summit was going on in 2011. Um, so we just wanted to support them. That initiative has made some progress recently. <laughs> in January, we came together as a community and said we really need to look at strategic funding opportunities for school-based mental health. Um, we had just had Sandy Cook tragedy. <coughs> and we really wanted to make sure that we weren't tapping out our local funders, that we weren't going to them over and over again for our individual programs. Although we were coordinating our efforts, it could seem that we were um, not coordinating our efforts. <laughs> and so um, right before our first meeting at the beginning of January, we made the mistake of looking on the SAMHSA website. And there was an RFP to see about creating a strategic plan for creating a system of care for children and families. Um, we had a really short turnaround, but we sought after that grant funding. Um, our hope is that we get it. <laughs> if we get it, it's a one-year grant to create a, a strategic plan on how we're going to create a better system of care for children and families um, in our community. Um, we won't point out to fall, but that's definitely a hope that we have um, that would allow us to bring together all of our community agencies and stakeholders to really bring our expertise to the table and tell us how we can do a better job creating a better system of care for children and families and connecting them. And our No Wrong Door um, initiative would definitely act as a thread throughout the system of care, but it's only part of the pieces that we need to deal with. Another initiative that came out of that was looking at um, our 24-7 crisis. Uh, because Appleton, I'm new to Wisconsin, and so I've had the opportunity to learn um, that there's three counties in Appleton, <laughs> and how um, that is really unique to a lot of different communities. And so our 24-7 group has spent the last year bringing in together law enforcement, emergency doctors, social workers, consumers with families um, and the counties to, to identify um, what's really happening in, in crisis right now and what can we do, what are some easy changes that we can make to make it a little bit easier for um, consumers and families when they are in crisis, um, particularly mental health crisis. Um, that group really has just spent the last year learning from each other. Um, there's a lot to learn. <laughs> um, and now we're at the pivotal point where they're going to start to look at what are their action steps going to be. Um, This primary care support stigma. Um, we also identified in our December planning meeting um, wanting to work on mental health awareness and stigma because we realized we can really create an amazing system of care, but if mental health is still stigmatized by providers and by consumers and family members and the general public, that people weren't necessarily going to access the care that they needed. And so we're really working hard to brand May as Mental Health Awareness Month. We are planning a few different activities with all of our member agencies to start the conversation and branding May as Mental Health Awareness Month. So our first event is going to be a kickoff for um, May, and that's May 1st at Riverview Gardens at the Community Center, to really just be our first say, hey, it's, it's May and it's Mental Health Awareness Month, and here's our community calendar of all the events that are going on with agencies that are working with mental health. Um, there is so much that I, effort is going on with mental health that I don't have enough time to tell you all about it. What I hope is that you guys can find is that the Mental Health Connection is a membership organization. We are bringing together all of the community stakeholders who are interested in mental health that kind of align with our mission and vision of connecting community stakeholders and resources together. Um, and my hope for you isn't to tell you everything about mental health. My hope is that you can identify an agency that is bringing together the providers and people that are concerned about mental health and that we can become a resource for you. So if you have specific questions about uh, mental health issues and policies that you can contact us and we can hopefully put you in contact with one of our member agencies that would best be able to answer that question. Good question. Uh, you hear a lot about mental health, but as you said, uh, people don't want to admit that they have mental health problems. Is having projects going forward and calling it rational thinking rather than mental health might be a little more attractive? I understand what you're saying, but if we as professionals can't call it what it is, then how are we going to overcome stigma? Well, the, the stigma, we're going to it, it's part of it rather than, see, the, uh, and I used to teach a program that's 
sales. If it's a matter of <coughs> many of the time, if you said something that you need this to help you, they back away. But uh, this is something you might like to have that you can pull. Sure. And when we talk to parents about what Teen Screen is, um, Teen Screen's house at Samaritan Counseling right now is one of our member organizations. They do talk to parents about overall wellness. Because, and, and our thing for me is to talk about there's to stand up against stigma. There is no health without mental health. That your brain is part of your body. You can't detach it when you walk in anywhere. So we have to treat the person as a whole person. And, and that's really behind a lot of our messaging is that <coughs> you can't have any, you can't be healthy without being mentally healthy. And so we do talk about overall wellness when we're talking um, about mental health. And, and it truly it is overall wellness.